All right, today we're going to start with our first biology topic. We're going to talk about the cell. Now I'm going to teach this in a little bit different way than you probably learned it in your biology class. And uh, if you watch my intro video, you know that I just do things in a little different way. This is not to teach it all to you for the very first time. It is just a review so that you're ready for the Texas State Tax Test. And so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the cell today. Now we're going to talk about animal cells and we're going to talk about plant cells. They're a little bit different from each other. As a matter of fact, I'm going to label them for you real quick. And my suggestion to you as you go along, if I, you feel like I'm getting ahead of you, pause the video, copy what you see on the screen, and then continue to play the video as we go along so that you get all of the notes. Now, here's how I'm going to teach this today. Um, I'm going to teach this as the cell being a country. Let's pretend that you own a country. Now, every country has a border of some sort. Now, you'll notice that the animal cell has more of a round a border and that the plant has more of a square border. Well, first of all, on an animal cell, it is called the cell membrane. The cell membrane. Now, plants have a cell membrane, but it's actually located right inside the outer one. So we'll go ahead and label it like that. So they both have a cell membrane, but plants have an extra part. Their outside part is called the cell wall and it is very, very rigid. Now, why would it be that way? Well, here's an easy way to understand it. The animal cell, for example, we're animals. The animal cells are really, really pliable. You can bend them really easily. But we can do that because we have bones for support inside. But plants don't have bones. So they have to do things in a little different way. So they have to have a really rigid outside cell wall. Think of it as a brick. When you pile bricks on top of bricks, you can build a very, very tall building because every brick itself is very sturdy. You don't have to have that in the animal cell. So you have both the cell membrane here on the animal cell and the cell membranes inside cell wall very sturdy on the outside. Now, with our country, now we have our border. Borders also have openings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a couple of openings in here. And we can let things in and out very easily. The same thing is also true for plant cells. They can let things in and out and those openings would be anywhere around the outside. I just put in one for now. But just like a country, you can let things in and out, but you can also close them off and plant and animal cells can do that as well. Okay, So they have a, an outside border that allow things to move in and out. Now inside this country, if you're going to establish a country, you're going to have to have some kind of government, something that runs everything. Well, in the cell, that is called the nucleus. It's a control center. It controls everything that's going to happen inside that cell. And so there's a nucleus in both of them. Now, inside the nucleus, just like when you have your government, you have to have your rules of your government that run how you're going to run your country inside the nucleus is going to be your DNA. and Your DNA is going to run how that cell runs and that is true uh, for the US government. Our Constitution is the plans of how we're going to run our government, how we run our country. So in this little country we're calling the cell, your DNA inside the nucleus is going to run exactly how the cell works and what it can and cannot do. Now, there are a lot of different parts in the cell, and many of the parts are the same in the animal cell as in the plant cell as well. So let, let's go through a couple. Now we have a border that we can let things in and out. We also have a nucleus that's going to be the government, and the plans are going to be the DNA. But running the country, you have to have some things. If you bought some land for your country, you better have a pretty good water supply. And so I'm going to go ahead and put in our water supply and we'll put them in different places because it doesn't matter where they are. This is called a vacuole. And there's one over here as well. As a matter of fact, cells have multiple vacuoles, but I'll just draw in one for right now. They're going to hold their storage areas, typically for water. It's almost like a lake if you were looking at it 
from an airplane, but it's going to hold water. When it's a really dry time, that vacuole may get really, really small. When there's a lot of water present, it may take in a lot more and get a lot bigger and take up a lot more of the cell. But the vacuole is going to store water. Now, it can also be a storage area for other things. Sometimes it can be used as storage of wastes, and then when it's time, those wastes are pumped out of the cell. How would they get out? Well, there's your way of getting in and out of the cell. So vacuoles are one part. Here's another part. This one is an interesting one. This one is called the endoplasmic reticulum. And I'm going to draw it sort of like this. And that endoplasmic reticulum can be located here as well. Now, I'm not the best artist in the world. But uh, here's what it is. Here's how it's spelled. Endoplasmic reticulum. Now, the endoplasmic reticulum, which is located in both of these, is a little bit different. This is the highway system, okay? This is going to be the highway system within the cell. So you're going to have not only water that you need to transfer, uh, transport around the cell, but you're going to also have food and other things you need to transport. It's their highway system. They can drop it in there and it can be transported. So there's multiple endoplasmic reticulums inside a cell. I'm just drawing one. Now, sometimes the endoplasmic reticulum has dots all over it, and sometimes it doesn't. So I'm going to go ahead and put dots on this one, but not on this one. These little dots are what are called ribosomes, and these are really important. Okay, We'll talk about them in one of the other sessions of ribosomes, but we're going to go ahead and put the word proteins. Ribosomes are where we're going to have the proteins of the cell, and those are going to be very important. So sometimes this one's called a rough endoplasmic reticulum because it looks rough. It has all these things stuck to it. This one would be called a smooth endoplasmic reticulum because it doesn't have them. Again, what makes it rough is the ribosomes that are located in here. Just a reminder, if I'm going too fast, go ahead and pause the video at times and draw these in your notes and you can label the definitions as well as I talk about them, making sure you have all those parts so that you're prepared. Now, another part of the cell is called, and I'm going to draw it like this. You may think, wow, that looks like a vacuole. Well, it might because I'm not a very good artist. But this is called the mitochondria. Now, in a developed country, you're going to have an energy source. In America, we have coal, wood, oil as uses for energy, but inside the cell, you have the mitochondria. This is where you're going to produce the energy of the cell. It is the power plant of the cell. The energy of the cell is in the form of what is called ATP, adenosine triphosphate. But typically, you'll see it as ATP. So I want you to hear that at this point. We'll talk about it later in another session. But ATP, mitochondria produce the energy. So you have water supply. You have an energy supply. You have a border. You have a transportation system. You can see how this is looking just like a country. Now, there are a couple other things that I'm going to show you, and um, I'm going to use a different color on purpose. I'm going to use this green color, and I'll go ahead and put a star right here. And this star is going to be really important because that star means it's only located in the plant cell. So a cell wall, as we talked about a while ago, is only in the plant cell. Now, I'm going to draw in another part here. And I'm going to go ahead and make multiple of this one. Now, I already said that... Um, all of these parts I'm talking about, there's multiples in the cell, so there's multiple there are vacuoles and different mitochondria, but this one's a really important one as well. And I'm going to go ahead and put a star next to it because it is called the chloroplast. And it is only located in the plant cell. The chloroplast is what is going to help with what is called photosynthesis. Photosynthesis, okay? Now, chloroplast is sort of like the solar cell on a calculator. It is going to absorb light, and it is going to transform that light into the energy that the cell needs. Now, the reason that plants do this is because they are called autotrophs. Plants are autotrophs. They make their own food. They sit out in the sun, collect that sunlight, and they make their own food. Animals aren't like that. Animals are what are called heterotrophs. 
And those heterotrophs, they get their energy from others. So like in our case, we eat food, and when we eat the food, we get the energy from our food. Plants don't do that. They'll absorb water out of the uh, ground. They'll get carbon dioxide from the air, and using this light that is absorbed through these chloroplasts, they will uh, go through the process of photosynthesis to make their own food. Now at the same time, I need to give you one more word. Looks very similar. Chlorophyll, go ahead and box that word in. Chlorophyll is what makes plants green. Okay, So that's why I put it in a green color. Chlorophyll is located inside the chloroplast and it is through the absorption of light with this chlorophyll inside the chloroplast that actually where photosynthesis takes place. So the world would be a different place if we didn't have plants because they make their own food and they're the beginning of the food chain. We're almost done. One other term that I need to give you and uh, we're going to add this here at the bottom uh, where we already had heterotrophs. We'll go ahead and take those terms out. I want to give you one other term and that term is going to be the word prokaryote versus eukaryote. This one confuses people sometimes, but here it is very quickly. A prokaryote is a very simple cell. Very simple. Maybe the word primitive would be a better word. Eukaryotes are going to be more developed. Now the e easy way to, uh, to understand these is you are a eukaryote. Now, how do I know the difference easier? Here it is. If a cell has a nucleus, it's a eukaryote. Prokaryotes, no nucleus. So what has this? Well, both of these cells are eukaryotes because they have a nucleus and they're very developed. Prokaryotes are going to be bacteria. So add that in there. Bacteria, which are not like this or this, are going to be prokaryotes. So these are the parts of the cell and how they work.